Welcome to part two of Houdini Basics, where I'll be talking about attributes. So attributes are like qualities that any object has. So let's see, I lay down a simple sphere by holding control and clicking and visualizing the points. So in order to see the attributes that are inherent in this sphere already, we need to go to the geometry spreadsheet. But since I want both the scene view and the geometry spreadsheet to be visible, I'm gonna split this pane top and bottom and then right click on this tab and go to geometry spreadsheet. So here we're presented with four different columns. This leftmost column represents the point IDs. So this column actually represents an attribute. Here we have 265 rows which correspond to the subdivisions of our sphere. So every one of these points corresponds to one of these IDs, which we can visualize by pressing this icon up here. So this point at the very top has the ID of zero which we can see right here. So this point has these values in this X, Y, and Z coordinates in world space. The second point will be at the bottom, and this has the object ID of one. So as I've described in the previous tutorial, this is the object context and the node graph. And these nodes represent containers which we can dive into. And once we dive into it, we're presented with the geometry context. So this is the default sphere. And I want to add some other point attributes to it other than the position. And again, we're only working with points here. So in this geometry spreadsheet, we have these four different icons. And just like we have the different selection modes for points, vertices, primitives, and detail, we can flip through them. So here's the vertices. And here are the primitives. So here we have 287 primitives. So if we count all of the faces on the sphere, they'll add up to that number. And detail is the entire object. So most operations in Houdini are gonna be executed on the points most of the time. So you're gonna find yourself in this points menu quite often. Another simple attribute I can add onto the sphere are normals. So if I put down a normal SOP and connect it, and by the way, if you hover over the bottom peg and drag it down, it's gonna connect it. Then I'm gonna flag it to look at it, and we're gonna execute this normal SOP on the points. And now, as you can see, we're immediately presented with another vector, which is the normals. Again, a vector is a set of three different values. So if I visualize by point normals uh, by clicking on this icon, we're presented with these lines. So this is the directionality that the points are facing towards. By the way, whenever I say SOP, this refers to surface operators, which is basically any nodes that are available to us in the geometry context. Now let's add a transform SOP to our chain. I'm gonna add some animation to this sphere. So I'm gonna translate it in the Z axis. So by holding down Alt and clicking, I'm putting down a keyframe on frame one. Now let's move it to say 48, move this over six units. By the way, the default units in Houdini are meters. So I'm gonna hold Alt again and click. And this creates another keyframe giving us an animation. I'm gonna turn off my visualizations and scrub through the animation. So now you can see these values changing because all of the points are getting moved in the Z axis. So now what I wanna do is calculate our velocity based on this animation. Velocity is basically speed. It's also a vector like the position and normals. So to calculate the velocity of our object, we have to put down a point velocity SOP. This is a new SOP in Houdini 17. So once we have that down, here we're presented with another vector for velocity. So if I scrub through this, th this is the speed at which these points are moving. So because we have a Bezier curve as the default interpolation that we can see in the animation editor, that's a Bezier curve. So it ramps up and eases out. So we start with a low value, ramping up the speed, then we get to four, and then it slowly goes back to a lower value again. Another example of an attribute is color. So if I put down a color SOP after this point velocity and highlight it, we're gonna see we're presented with another vector attribute for color. By default, it's set to white, which is represented by one, one, one. So X, Y, Z in this case represents RGB values. So for red, green, and blue. If I click on the color swatch, I can pick a different color and we'll see it visualized in our scene view. If I flag the point velocity, the color is going to go away because at this point in time, no color is being applied. An example of manipulating the attributes randomly can be done with an attribute randomized SOP. So we already have color on this, 
and the default attribute in the attribute randomize sop is color represented by capital C D for color diffuse so I'm going to use the shortcut Q to bypass the color node and we still have the color because the attribute randomize applies it by default and makes it random per point so now we can see that each point has its own random color so one really important concept as opposed to other DDCs is that these container objects don't necessarily represent objects per se more like a procedural data flow so here we're presented with several nodes which execute certain operations so they operate on the data and change it so it flows downstream through these nodes in this order now I want to talk a little bit about the difference between points and vertices so here we are in the sphere and by the way to center an object in the scene view if you hold down spacebar and press G it's gonna center it so let's visualize the points on this sphere there's a point for every intersection of the edges but if we were to visualize the vertices we can see that each corner has its own vertex so the vertices are sort of the cross sections between each primitive so Houdini has a number of built-in attributes that can be used and these can be referenced in an attribute VOP VOP stands for VEX operators which I'll get into in a later tutorial when you dive inside of this VOP we're presented with these inputs so this is taking the data from the previous SOP which is connected and the different attributes can be manipulated with a chain of other nodes called VOPs. So here we have capital P for position which we already saw. We have lowercase v for velocity, force, age, life, ID, color, the UV coordinates, capital N for normals and so on. So here we have the point numbers which we saw on the leftmost column in the geometry spreadsheet. So we have primitive numbers and vertex numbers and here we have the number of points, the number of primitives and the number of vertices. So these represent the total numbers on the object. These are color coded to identify the different data types. So vectors are sets of three and occasionally four values so green means vector and whenever you see something blue like this this is an integer these cyan attributes that we have with age life time and time increment are actually float attributes so the difference between an integer and a float is that integers are whole numbers meaning one two three and so on and floats are fractional numbers so they can have decimal points for example point number over here is an integer because we can have decimal points representing the different point numbers. They're discrete bits of information. Something like time is an attribute that's calculated in seconds. So a second can actually be divided up in a fraction. Same with frame. Even though we have 24 frames in a second and they seem like they're integers, we can actually divide them up into what's called substeps or interpolation. So even a frame number can be represented as a float. There's also things like matrices and arrays, but for now we're going to stick with these three. So we have vectors, which are sets of three or four different values. We have floats, which are fractional numbers with decimal points, and we have integers, which are whole numbers. So I know this is a little confusing at first. I certainly thought so myself when I was starting to learn about the data types. Just as an example, this leftmost column has the point IDs which are integers so they go from 0 onward by whole numbers the position is a vector because it's three different values but each one of these values broken down are its own data type in this case these are all floats so the individual values of these vectors are float data types attributes can be created with an attribute create SOP as I lay down this SOP we can see that we have a new attribute which is a float because we see a decimal here the data type can be changed under this type so if I drop down the menu we have the different types of data types and we're gonna keep it as a float in this case and we're gonna create the attribute p scale for point scale we can't actually visualize the scale of the points in this case but if we instance objects onto these points the object is going to be scaled according to the p-scale attribute. 
So let's put down another attribute randomize SOP. We're going to give it one dimension because it's not a vector. And here we see we have a randomized p scale for each point. And it's randomized between 0 and 1. When we click on the attribute in the geometry spreadsheet, it's going to be ordered from the highest to lowest value. I'm just going to showcase how this p scale attribute is working by instancing some smaller spheres onto these points. This is done with the copy to points SOP. We need two different inputs. The first one is the primitives to copy. So I'm going to create another sphere. We have to change it from primitive to polygon, wire it in, and decrease its uniform scale. So this is going to be our initial scale. We're going to pipe in our points from our bigger sphere and visualize it. I'm going to turn off these visualizations and we can see we have instance spheres on every point of our bigger sphere. I'm going to crank this initial scale down and here we have random scales on the spheres driven by the p scale on our points. If I bypass the attribute randomize and bring our default value back to 1, we're going to have a regular p scale. So they have uniform values of 1. The random color, again, is coming from our first attribute randomized SOP, which randomizes the color by default. So now I want to talk a little bit about groups. So any number of either points, primitives, or vertices can be collected into groups. So I'm going to put down a group SOP and pipe it in. Now we have a group created. It's called group 1 by default, but I'm going to change it. So let's collect all the points that are above a val the Y value of 0. So I'm going to call this group above, run it over the points. So any new group we make can actually already be seen in our geometry spreadsheet. Since we're running this over points, it'll be in our points menu. So right now, it's gathering all of the points and putting them into our group. So every one of these points have a value of 1 in the group, which means that they are in the group. A value of 0 would omit them from the group. So here I'm going to write a simple expression. I'm going to type in at for attribute, capital P for position, greater than 0. I'm adding a dot y to represent only the y value of our position vector. So this means that anything above 0 in the y-axis is going to be put into this group, and anything below is going to be omitted from it. So every expression needs a semicolon at the end. I'm going to click away and it's going to execute. So now we can see some of our points are in 0 and some of them are in Y. So again, if I click this, it's going to arrange it in order. So now we have a group, but we can't actually visualize how the group is being affected in the viewport because we're not actually running any app, any operations on the group. So I'm going to put down a color SOP and color it red. Most SOPs have this group field up here. If I drop down this menu and click on above, only the points in my above group are going to be affected by this color SOP. Likewise, I can also put down, say, a delete node, include the above group, and run it over points. So our entire above group is deleted. These delete nodes have a handy little function where we can delete the non-selected points. So that means it's going to delete everything that's not in the group. Now I want to talk about a node called attribute transfer, which allows us to transfer attributes from one object to another. So say I lay down a grid. Now I'm going to add another color SOP and append it to the sphere. I'm going to give it a green value just for variety's sake. So when I highlight this, we have a green sphere. I'm going to template my grid to visualize its wireframe. So this grid does not have a color value at this point. So if I lay down an attribute transfer node, we have two inputs, one for the geometry to transfer attributes to and one to transfer attributes from. So we are transferring the green attribute from this sphere to the grid. So here in our attribute transfer under the attributes tab, we're transferring the color and if we visualize this, it gets applied to our entire grid. This is because of the default parameters in our conditions tab. We have a distance threshold of 10 meters, meaning it's going to 
spread across 10 units by proximity. So if I crank it down, we can see that it's going to transfer less and less of it. And the blend is sort of like a feathering. But both of these parameters have the same result, and that's because we need some more resolution on our grid, and also we need to add a color attribute to our grid, because right now it has none. So I'm going to lay down another color SOP and append it to the grid. And now we have proper interpolation when we tweak the blend width. So the default of the color SOP is white, so it's going from green to white. So if I have no blend width, it doesn't interpolate between the points, so it moves very linearly. And now we have a change in the feathering. So you can transfer any attribute you want from one object to another with the attribute transfer SOP. So that's it for today. I hope I presented this information in a clear and concise way. Thanks a lot for watching.